Hello mate and welcome to a slightly different video from me. I'd have to apologise for the Kevin Feige look, I'm just trying something new. So today's video we are going to talk about simple rules for working with models. Now I know that this is only going to be relevant to a certain number of people, predominantly people who are like me, photographers as well as game developers. But I feel like this is relevant purely because there are a number of game developers who are now using um, live models for their game content, whether that be an AVN or any other kind of game content. And there are certain things, there are certain nuances to working with models that if you don't understand them before you start working with them, you can fall foul of um, cancel culture or any number of other things. So let's get into it. So tip number one is a fairly simple one, and that is before you contact any model, whether that's a male model or a female model or a trans model, you need to have a idea of your creative direction. You need to know specifically what it is that you want to shoot. There's nothing that screams red flag louder to a model and having photographers contact them who have absolutely no clue what they want to shoot because it comes across as just an unsolicited uh, attempt to contact them. So when you contact the model, you need to, at the very, very least, have an idea as to when you're going to do the shoot and specifically what you're going to be shooting uh, and be able to give them a kind of heads up as to what the images will be used for. And that becomes relevant in a tip further down the line as well. It's very important to make sure that your comms are very clear. There's no ambiguity and that you are completely forthcoming with the model as to what the images are going to be used for because they will find out somehow or other if you're lying to them and uh, that's a bad look. The next tip I would say is you don't necessarily need to worry about what type of camera you have. If you've got a DSLR or a mirrorless or a, for God forbid, a Hasselblad or a Phase 1, that's amazing but you can shoot content with a phone or with a lower end camera. It's really not that important. I have worked with models in the past who've had photographers turn up with nothing other than a Panasonic um, snappy cam or, or their iPhone. It's about all the content and what it is that you're trying to create. A model's generally not gonna freak out if you turn up without a DSLR, provided that you're very clear about what it is that you're shooting and why. If you turn up with just a phone and you're sort of mumbling and haven't really got a clue what you're doing, it's again, you're going to be sending the wrong message to these models. So make sure that you are at least open again, once again, being open about what equipment it is that you're going to use. Next up, I would strongly recommend making sure that you have your locations and your mood boards set up before you contact the model, or at the very least know exactly where it is that you're going to be shooting. In order for you to be able to capitalize and make the most of your model's time, you need to have a very clear plan of the way things are going to work through the shoot. It's just like a movie shoot in that the movie's shooting schedule will be planned months in advance and very, very rarely will they deviate from that unless something goes horribly wrong. If you are intending to try and capture an entire visual novel's worth of images within one day, which is a challenge, I would probably aim to do it within two days, but if you're trying to capitalize on that time, again, it's only going to be achievable if you have an idea of what order you're going to shoot things in. And that means being smart about makeup and locations. They sort of work in tandem. It's all very well and good doing all of your living room shoots in one chunk. But if the model has to change makeup three or four times throughout that session to match the part of the storyline that they're in, then you're going to be wasting a lot of time. Realistically, it doesn't take a lot of time to move a model and a camera from one location to another, but it does take a lot of time for them to change their look constantly. So if, for example, the model changes their hairstyle at some point during the story of the game, you're going to have to do that hairstyle change every time you shoot in the locations where that style is going to be relevant. So realistically, unlike movies where they'll try and shoot uh, everything in one location all in one chunk, the chances are you're not going to have the luxury of the time it would take to do that and an entire makeup and costume team ready to change and revert the looks of the model back and forth. So 
Again, this is all part of planning ahead, making sure that you're going to capitalize on the time. And you also have to factor in breaks because if you just run a model ragged for an entire day, an eight hour session realistically should be at the very least broken up into two hour chunks. I know that European law and law in different countries is usually more centered around four hour breaks, but modeling is actually a pretty strenuous task. Not only do they have to hold physical poses for quite a long time, especially if you're fumbling around trying to get your exposures right and all that, but they also have to be able to emote constantly and portray a certain thing. So it's not an easy thing. So personally, I tend to do a break every hour for about 10 minutes just so they can have a drink, have a wee or whatever it is that they need to do. And then in the middle of the eight hour day, unfortunately, you've got to have at least a 45 minute break. That's the law and you cannot refuse to pay them for that time if they're on your premises. So good luck with that conversation. So again, planning ahead, making sure that you have your shooting schedule for the day planned is key in making sure that you get the shots that you need. Otherwise, you may run out of time and then you may try and book a model for an extra day and they're not available, in which case your production is halted because you have to wait for the model to become available again and then you have to hope that their hairstyle is identical to that in the shoot that they haven't had you know a massive binge over the weekend and gained 10 pounds or whatever so you've really got to plan these things ahead and have contingencies which brings me on to my next tip having a contingency is really important now i am the first person to admit that some models out there can be a bit flaky and that's not to say all of them are. Most models I've worked with have been absolutely amazing. They're on time. They come with all of the gear that you need and they're enthusiastic throughout the shoot. However, I would say probably 5% of the models that I've booked throughout my career have not shown up or have turned up late or have turned up unprepared for the shoot or have turned up completely unsuitable for the shoot because their portfolio hasn't been updated in 10 years. So you do have to make contingency plans. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean booking another model just in case because models tend not to like being messed around. So if you book one model and then you book another one as a contingency and then on the last minute you tell the contingency model, I don't need you, they're going to be pissed and you're probably going to have to pay them for their time anyway because most models, certainly the professional ones, have a cancellation fee, which brings me on to another point that we'll talk about in a few minutes. But yeah, have a contingency, which usually means have an alternative set of dates that you can do the shoot. So if the model that you book doesn't turn up and you haven't planned your entire marketing campaign around this one specific model, then you can usually get another model within a few days to make up or rather replace them. However, something that you tends to find is that a lot of production companies will put all their eggs in one basket so you'll end up with an entire marketing campaign based around portfolio images of a specific model saying this model's going to be in our game she's fantastic look at this and then she doesn't show up for the shoot and you're boned because the audience have already geared themselves up to see this one person and you haven't got that one person now you've got two choices in this case you can either start a marketing campaign which lines up the audience for a new model or you can wait and hope that the other model becomes available at some other point. Now it's important to note that when you do the former of those two things that you don't go negative. Do not at any point in your marketing campaign, even if the model has really pissed you off, do not go negative because cancel culture is a real thing and simps are a real thing and I will 100% guarantee you that if you go on the attack about a model within 24 hours of you saying anything negative about them, you will have literally thousands of people bashing you, threatening you, making troll posts on your accounts, uh, all sorts of things. Because unfortunately, white knight th the white knight thing is still very much a thing and the audience always sides with the model. It's just the way it is. Very, very rarely will you ever see a social media post where a model complains about a photographer or somebody else that's what they've worked with, where that person didn't then get a huge amount of grief because of it. And the last thing you need when you're just trying to get your game off the ground is bad press or people threatening you or whatever. So be very careful 
which way you handle it if the model does let you down. Next tip is choosing your models. Choose your models very carefully. There are many, many, many websites all around the globe, whatever country you're in, where models are allowed to list their portfolios, uh, portfolio of images, list some details about themselves, usually including what they will and won't do in terms of levels of nudity. And it will tell you how much they're going to cost, including any cancellation fees and any discounts for longer bookings or whatever. And it will have a number of images. Now, a lot of these portfolio sites have a section where you can see images that that model was tagged in because the models themselves aren't going to upload any images that they feel don't make them look good, which is great. And that's exactly what you would expect from a model's portfolio. However, there may not be a true representation of what the model actually looks like. Photoshop is still a thing and a lot of people are still really heavy handed with it. So what you can do is go on these credited images or these tagged images that other people have uploaded of them and you can see what the photographers of perhaps a lower retouching skill level will have of them which will give you a more realistic representation of what that model actually looks like because if you're a game developer and you're just dipping your toes in the photography waters the chances are you're not going to be at a level where you're going to be able to capture these amazing heavily photoshopped or great marketing images either. So keep your expectations realistic and say, right, what does this model actually look like and how are their natural posing abilities so that I know what I've got to work with and if I'm actually going to be able to use them. And also check the dates on the images. Make sure that you're not seeing images from 10 or 15 years ago. I've fallen foul of this a few times, particularly in my earlier career where I'd book a model who looked absolutely amazing in every single photograph and they turn up and they're 20 pounds heavier, which isn't necessarily a problem if you're happy to work with a model who's bigger than that which you're expecting to. But if you have a very specific set in mind, a very specific shoot in mind, and the model turns up looking nothing like they were advertised to be, that can be a real problem. So make sure that you check all of these details before you book the model. The last tip is really the most important one and it is being clear that you're doing this for the right reasons. Booking a model for a photo shoot is not something that should be taken lightly. It's a big commitment for you and them and if at any point you feel that you are not doing it for the right reasons and believe me there are a lot of guys out there who try to book models for shoots who have photography leased in their mind then it will come out very quickly and the last thing you need is a bad reputation for being a photographer who's too handsy or crude or lewd or constantly trying it on with the models. Keep it professional 100% of the time. If the model and you are having good banter then you know you have to pick your audience and you can judge what jokes are and aren't acceptable but if at any point you start trying you start making the model feel uncomfortable for something that you've said or that you're maybe getting too close to them or whatever they are going to destroy your reputation in less than less time than it takes for them to drive home from the photo shoot so if at any point you think maybe you're not doing this for the right reasons or if you know for a fact you're not doing it for the right reasons do yourself a favor and don't bother don't contact the models because you think oh she's fit i'd like to have a go on her that is not a reason to book a model trust me on this one i've seen it happen to many people and it is not worth it. Thanks very much for watching that, guys. I hope you found it useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you think of the Kevin Feige look, if it's working for me or not. I will see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.